Hello, greetings. I'm about to give you a uh, a a passage, a long lost passage of Nikola Tesla that I can guarantee you that none of you have read before. First, I'd actually like to point out this deranged moron. He's a Richard Richard Feynman, or as I call him, Tricky Dicky. Um, even though he was an abysmal fool, and he wrote the book uh, QED Strange Three of Light and Matter. This this idiot right here is dead, by the way. Now, he actually said that uh, uh, what was going on between magnets was virtual photons. I might remind you that that's of course crazy ass atomism. It has no basis in reality. And virtual photons, which is like saying unicorns, have never been the input or output of any experiment ever done. Ever done, period. I think I got a quote here. Uh, here we go. Here's another tr uh, quote from Richard Feynman. The more you see how strange nature behaves, the harder it is for us to make a model that explains even the most simple phenomena work. How the most simple phenomena. Theoretical physics has uh, given up on uh, this pursuit. This is one of his, uh, his heirs of insanity. This is Dr. Leonard Susskind, professor of theoretical physics and a hardcore priest in the cult of quantum, specifically quantum atomism, which is intellectual BS. Let me give you a quote from him. When common sense and intuition fail, we had to create, meaning the uh, idiot uh, quantum atomist, we had to create a new form of intuition <laughs> based upon abstract mathematics. When common sense fails, we had to create uncommon sense. I think another word for uncommon sense is stupidity and crazy-ass bullshit. Um, even though Feynman was a lunatic, even though like a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then, there's like three or four quotes of him where he actually says something uh, halfway accurate. This one's some completely accurate. I like to show it to you. It says, it is important to realize that in physics today, we have no knowledge of what energy is. Now, this is an accurate quote. He's telling you that the cult of quantum has never defined energy. I know exactly what energy is. I've even got the discovery for the manifestation, which is not uh, prima causa. It's right tattooed right here on uh, the inside of my wrist. So that's actually correct. There's no branch of... Uh, and something else, too, there's no branch of modern physics or even theoretical physics that's ever defined a field in itself, of itself, by itself. No branch. All you have to do is just go find the smartest um, physician, uh, excuse me, uh, physicist, excuse me, physicist or theoretical physicist, and ask them to define what a field is in itself. Of it. It's like asking them to define what energy is. They haven't got a clue. They'll, be, they'll sit there and gargle on their own spit before they'll say anything because there's not a single scientist today that can tell you what a field is. Let's get to the heart of it. And uh, this is a, uh, a rather lengthy quote from Nikola Tesla on what light is. And by the way, this is the same position I take because this is the only thing that light can be. Uh, and I'd like to quote you that all of this are the words of uh, Nikola Tesla, okay? And uh, he starts off slowly here. There is something frightening about the universe when we consider that only our senses of sound and sight make it beautiful. The universe is darker than the darkest ink, colder than the coldest ice, and more silent than a silent tomb. Sight and sound are our only avenues through which by we perceive it all. There is a third sense which we have failed to discover. The fascination of, as meant the false, electromagnetic theory of light as forwarded by James Clerk Maxwell and subsequently experimentally investigated by Hertz was so great that even now, although controverted, the scientific minds, he means idiots in this case, the scientific minds are under its sway. This theory supposed the existence of a medium which was solid yet permitted bodies to pass through it without resistance. By medium, he means light as something that's moving. I mean, he's talking about uh, the medium. He says he uh, supposed the existence of a medium which was solid yet permitted uh, bodies uh, to pass through it without resistance. He's talking about light as something, um, which, of course, it is not. Um, this is a tenuous uh, conception. Yet according to our conceptions of mechanical principles and the aged experiences, such a medium was absolutely impossible. 
light was, hate means wrongly, light was wrongly considered such a phenomena bound up in that uh, vibration, meaning a transverse electrical magnetic. I consider this important. Light cannot be anything. This is where he gets to what light is. Light cannot be anything else, nothing else than a sound wave in the ether, i.e. a perturbation, an ether perturbation, as I've said specifically. This appears clearly if it is not first realized that there is no Maxwellian ether. Therefore, there can be no transverse oscillation in the medium. The Newtonian theory is also an error because it fails entirely in not being able to explain how a small candle can project light with the same intensity and same speed as that of the blazing sun, which has an immensely higher temperature and power. We have made sure by experiment that light propagates with the same velocity irrespective of the character of the source. Now, Tesla is incorrect in this. Light doesn't propagate at all, nor does it move. It's an ether perturbation, but he's speaking conventionally in the sense of propagation. You know, the speed of light is nothing other than the rate of, uh, uh, the rate of induction, uh, uh, the propagation of that medium as uh, against itself of the transverse vibration, which is light, which is an ether perturbation. If you actually have a, a large uh, bed sheet, for example, and you nail one side of it to the wall, and you grab this side of it, and you start flicking it like this, I mean, is the sheet moving longitudinally? No. What you're doing is you're creating perturbations or waves in that sheet, which seemingly, from a stupid person's perspective, travels like, well, I see a wave in the sheet, and it's moving. The sheet is not moving. There's nothing moving. It's the perturbation is being induced, you know, just like pistons in a car. Pistons don't move this way. They move up and down, and they drive a crankshaft, but nothing is moving longitudinally or propagating longitudinally, so nothing is moving. Um, let me get back to Tesla here. Um, such consistency of velocity, velocity can only be explained by assuming that it is dependent solely on the physical properties of the, the ether medium, especially its density and elasticity um, for, uh, for, for, for force, as he means the resistance of force. Um, I don't know if you... Uh, uh, I'm trying to actually uh, find the quote here. Um, specifically, uh, when we're talking about light, I'm going to give you... a a quote uh, from uh, the idiot uh, Albert Einstein who uh, uh, said this. Gilbert Lewis is the idiot that actually came up with the term photon. But this is uh, from the moron Einstein. By the way, Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot, a lunatic, a beggar dressed in the purple robes of a king, meaning he was an intellectual fraud. Those are Nikola Tesla's words on Einstein. Uh, by the way, Einstein, I mean, excuse me, Tesla gave us the entirety of the modern electrical world, essentially. Him and Charles Brody Steinmetz and others who perfected it, of course, but Einstein didn't give us anything. No, he literally gave us nothing. He, he gave us a refrigerator invention, but uh, by the way, the word Einstein means one stone in German, and one stone is slang for idiot or moron, just in case you wanted to know. This is Einstein about the wave-particle duality, and of course there's no such thing as a duality. A, there's no duality in nature. Duality means inherent contradiction, and nature has no inherent contradictions. A wave is not a thing, rather what a thing does. And light, sure as hell, is not a particle. So there's no such thing as a wave-particle duality. All three of those uh, words are contradictory BS. This is Einstein, the idiot that he is. It seems as though we must use uh, sometimes that one theory and sometimes the other while at times uh, we may use Isa pertaining to light, we are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality, of light. Separately, they, neither one of them fully explains the phenomenon of light, but together they do, meaning wave and particle. <laughs> this is what the idiot Einstein called das Liquant, um, uh, what he called the, uh, the light quantum. Quantum, of course, what you don't understand, and this is the big secret of where this cult of atomistic bullshit came from, is that uh, modern scientists are not scientists in the sense of true truth seekers. What they are is mathematicians. And the one thing that pisses off a mathematician more than anything else is uh, the inability to count something. It doesn't exist, nor can it be of any importance if you can't count it. And, of course, light is ultimately super important. So uh, the scientists who are not scientists, rather a mathematician, had to quantize light. They had to particleize it. 
This is where the ancient Greeks destroyed atomism thousands of years ago, but it's made a resurgent in the minds of these mental midget asshole scientists that we think are smart, but in fact are mathematicians. You know, they think that nature is full of dualities and inherent contradictions and crazy bullshit. They come up, these are the idiots, let me see, it's important to realize in physics today we have no knowledge of what energy is. Well, he's right on that one. Um, Gilbert and Lewis coined the term photon as the smallest unit of radiant energy. Um, actually, the outcome of his letter to Nature magazine was not what he intended. In the letter, this is in 1926, he had proposed the photon being a structural element, not energy. He insisted that on um, the need for a new variable, the number of photons. This guy's a mathematician. Uh, although his theory differed from the quantum theory of light introduced by Albert Einstein in 1905, his name was adopted for what Einstein had called das Lichtquant, or the light quantum. Everything in quantum, and they, they, they say this themselves, is based upon an understanding of light, but not a single branch of uh, theoretical physics, nor these idiot assholes in quantum, have ever accurately or even come close to accurately defining light. And there are no paradoxes in Mother Nature. I mean, they even believe that bullshit is, uh, is uh, nonsense. Let me give you a quote uh, about what... Uh, of course, they say that magnetism is virtual, uh, virtual photons or virtual particles, which is just craziness. That's like saying unicorns. Let me give you a direct quote um, from the uh, scumbag Richard Feynman who actually forwarded this virtual particle BS in his own books. Here we go. A virtual particle is an abstraction which facilitates in calculations and understanding. The term is very vague and loosely defined, and they never appear as the inputs or outputs of any experiments. Their existence is, existence is questionable at best. However, they are very useful in rendering concepts and making equations balance out. Here we again get into math, the equations. You see, these people can't calculate fields. Everything is fields and fields are not particles. If you can't count the shit, then it's hard to do math for the shit. Ultimately, that's the irreducible, uh, <laughs> the irreducible truth about things. If you can't count the crap, then you can't do math on the crap. That's kind of profane, but that's uh, really as reducible as it gets. Um, these these idiots have created this uh, insanity based upon insanity built on the top of more insanity. It's absolutely crazable, crazy. Let me give you uh, something else on virtual photons. You'll actually find this in Wikipedia. The magnetic field between magnetic dipoles is caused by the exchange of virtual photons. These people think a field, these are their own words, a field is virtual photon. The magnet, listen to this shit, okay? You'll find this in Wikipedia and it was written by a quantum theorist. The magnetic field between magnets is caused by the exchange of virtual photons, quote, unquote. That is uh, substantially no different than saying unicorns or leprechauns, like microscopic leprechauns are leaping between <laughs> It's just the craziest shit ever. There's no such thing as a virtual photon or particle. That's not the input or output of any experiment ever done. They even say this in their own BS. Yeah, but when we say this, it helps our equations balance out. It's ridiculous. A field is not a particle. A field is not a thing. You can't quantize it, much less is it a virtual photon. Oh, my God. Here's another quote. Electromagnetic induction. The phenomena trans energy to and from a magnetic coil via a changing electromagnetic field composed of virtual photons. Wow. You see, if you're not too bright, you believe these people. Oh, I've got a PhD. I'm a... Like Leonard Susk. I'm a PhD physicist. The PhD doctoral field. Look at my... Look at the doctorate hanging on my wall behind my head here. Yes, you know, see my large mahogany table? You know, I am the head of theoretical physics. I have got a PhD and you don't. I'm awesome and you're a, a pissant. I said it there. This is what the academic community, my, my papers are peer-reviewed. You know what that means? It's like a, like a room full of mutually disgusting perverts all agreeing that each other's own perversions and ignorances are equally accurate. And it's like, I'm a pervert. Like, I'm a pervert too, Bob. I do... I do crazy, dirty stuff behind closed doors. I agree with you. See, I'm equally perverted. 
<laughs> That's what a peer review... Peer review means an academic circle jerk. There's a bunch of people that believe in each other's own... It's like dogs sniffing each other's dirty buttholes in a circle. Like, yeah, yours smells just as good as mine does. I agree with you. I give yours the stamp of approval. I smelled your butthole too. It smells just as good as mine does. <laughs> this is what academic peer review is. Is a bunch of retarded, knuckle-dragging, subhuman morons like this guy. I can always tell what people know. I posted this picture earlier up on Instagram. A guy, here's this crazy lunatic that had a hissy fit. Oh, I think that guy's really smart. It's like, oh, that says a lot about you. When I can immediately determine how smart or stupid someone is by the crap that they praise. Like, oh, I love that guy's books. I got him. I got his books too, but I only use them as a reference for how stupid he was. People loved him because he had a billion charisma points. This guy was cool, man. He would lounge back in the chair, Richard Feynman. He'd smoke on that cigarette. And everybody thought he was the coolest mofo in college. And from that superficial level, he was. Like, man, Richard Feynman's so cool. Went to his lecture. And he was, this is, there's true stories. Of he was drinking alcohol with one hand, smoking a cigarette with the other. Man, that bitch is cool. <laughs> everybody thought this guy was cool. And he was, but he was a effing moron. That's why everybody loved this guy. His lectures, he was like a cool kid. Like, hey man, what's happening, man? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna drink some of me some Jim Bean right here. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Groovy man. This guy was really cool, but he was also an idiot. See, that also confuses stupid people. They are so caught up in the cult of personality. If you were cool enough. Or you're like really cool, you can be really effing stupid and fool a lot of people. I can think of some politicians recently that uh, pulled that number off really, 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 really good. I know, I know you know who I'm talking about, and if you don't, you're not that smart. So here's to Tricky Dicky. <laughs> what a stupid ass. <laughs> I've got this guy's books. He was such a moron. People love him. They follow him like he's a cult. He's dead now. Probably because all that cigarettes he smoked, man. Every time someone took a picture of Feynman, he was sucking on a cancer stick like it was saving his life. Yeah, man, I'm cool. I think he even boasted of taking drugs. I think there's a story where he actually hung out with some college dudes and he was popping LSD with them and stuff like tripping me. Yeah, man! <laughs> loser thank you so much for watching here's to the cult of quantum a bag of wackadoodles um, escaped from the insane asylum a finer example you will never find